Good morning. Oh, I hear it. All right. I was gonna say your horn is probably your best form of communication. And, uh, so no matter where you are, you should be able to hear me if you're on 88.1. If you're not on 88.1, I'm just up here moving my lips and you have no clue what I'm talking about. I can't tell you how excited I am to see you all. I have missed you so much. We've been in correspondence, you know, back and forth in emails and Facebook. Oh yeah, I Facebook, how about a learning curve? I appreciate all your patience as I've been trying to do things on Facebook. And uh, it's been a little rope, or a bumpy road, but thank you so much for your patience as we're trying to just keep the church together. And you guys have done a great job of calling each other, communicating, and uh, I trust that you are all right. I'm just, how many of you guys have power? Give me a honk. <laughs> how many of you guys don't have power? Beep, beep, yeah. yeah. We heard the same thing, and uh, last night I was trying to get the last minute uh, information out, and uh, my generator, uh, it, it, Satan's been under full board attack on our family this week. I don't think he wanted this to happen, and praise God, you know what, greater is he than, uh, is in us than he that is in the world. So, uh, we're here, and we're going to praise Jesus. He is risen, he is risen indeed, and we're going to celebrate as we gather here together so i asked you i i did that on email i put it on facebook uh as well that uh we're going to sing two songs one of them is because he lived i hope you have the words uh my wife is going to sing i'm going to kind of get really quiet because like i said you don't want <laughs> coronavirus is bad enough losing power is bad enough you do not want to hear me solo on the radio but <laughs> my daughter said amen uh but hopefully you got the words if you know the verses Sing where you are, and uh, we'll just unite our hearts together in all these things. So, uh, because he lives. God sent his son. They called him Jesus.
conquered death, you conquered the grave, Lord, there is nothing you cannot do. Your people gather here this morning to celebrate and worship you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and the universe bows before you, Lord. I pray this morning that you bless us as we come. Lord, there are a lot of things that, that tried to hinder. Satan was busy. But Lord, we thank you that we are able to be here, Lord, in your name, for your glory. Let all these things be done. Even though we're separated by glass and metal, Lord, we are united in heart unto you, O Lord, because you're worthy of praise and so much more. Lord, we thank you for these things. And all God's people said, let me hear a honk. There you go. <laughs> and I, I do want to give a quick shout out. Uh, I was working with the town and working with the governor to make sure we get everything all legit. I appreciate you all staying in, the, in your vehicles, uh, Ray. Uh, but uh, we were told we, as long as we could do it, we were going to have it initially at the school, and then that kind of waffled back and forth. They said, well, you can do it if you can find some private property to do it on. And just going up the road here, and I uh, saw this spot, and I talked to Bill Anderson, who is our gracious host uh, today, and a uh, brand new trailer park. And so he's been gracious enough to let us do that. So why don't you give me a honk as a thank you for Bill? So he's been uh, gracious. We got the power. We have everything going on here. And so uh, we've been really hard to make this happen uh, without him. So I told him I'd give him a big shout out. And for all your camping needs, if you uh, need anything, he is, uh, he's your man. So we appreciate that. And uh, he's been real gracious. God has been good, uh, definitely. So you all doing all right? If you're doing all right, let me hear a honk. Are you tired of being home? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. And I know some of you have been kind of on quarantined and been told to stay home. And I appreciate you coming out. And, uh, you know, we're just praying for, for God's mercy. And I pray in the midst of all this, this really stirs people's heart to get the priorities right. And uh, this nation will turn its heart towards God. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's been a great opportunity for Christians online. Uh, as well, I think we have a fantastic testimony that no matter where we are, that's where the church is at. The church isn't the building as much as we like it. The church is in the hearts and souls of God's people. And you are the church, and Satan hasn't stopped that. But we were praying for a quick resolve in all of this, that the Lord will have mercy on us, give wisdom to our leaders, and uh, we'll see this out, get our way out of this thing. Uh, as soon as I look forward to, it's driving me nuts. I want to run around and give everyone a hug. And I know some, <laughs> I know some of you are like, good, praise the Lord. Right? Some of you have liked that social distance. But, uh, oh, I was like, people, I, I don't know about you, but I've been talking to drive through people. My wife's like, you can drive away now. And I'm like, I, wait, this is a, a conversation, you know? And she says, go on. And so I look forward. So prepare for some major huggage once we're out of this. And some of you may avoid me because of that now. Uh, Cindy, you have a, a number you'd like to share with us this morning. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on the cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance
He shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Amen. Thank you, hon. Um, if you have your Bibles, if you have your phones, <laughs> whatever you guys have, uh, we're going to be in the book of John. Now, I warn you, I haven't preached in, to, a, to in front of anyone for a couple of weeks, so I, I might have built up a little bit, so I don't know if I'll get too preachy this morning. But we talk about the tomb and being empty. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ ascended and came out of the tomb, alive, victorious. What a week that was. It started off with the crowd shouting out, Hosanna, and praise him on that Palm Sunday. By the end of the week, they were crying, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate, who took him and examined him and said he find no fault with this man, and yet the crowd still said, crucify him. Crucify him. Somebody debated whether it was the Jews that killed Jesus or whether it was the Romans that killed Jesus. Jesus himself said, no one takes my life from me, but I give it willingly. And he died for you and for me, for our sins. Our sins put him there. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. He died for our sins. But the story doesn't end there. The disciples were grieving, afraid that they were next, were hiding. The women who wanted to go and prepare the body of Christ couldn't because of the Sabbath day. And so the first thing that Sunday morning, they came out to the tomb. And lo and behold, the stone was rolled away. And John picks up here, and I want to... Just look at things a little bit different. John chapter 20, if you got your Bibles electronically or paperly or however you have it. Look at just a few verses here this morning. It says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. And she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, and they were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple ran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down, looked in and saw the linen clothes lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came and followed him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. And the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. What a shock Mary must have had that in here. She had waited, she had anticipated for the time to see her Lord. And she comes in, and the stone is gone, and, he, and he's gone. That shock, the dismay. 
You know, I can't help it. In the past few weeks, there's been a lot of shock and a lot of dismay. Right? Things haven't worked out quite like you thought it was going to. You know, just a month ago, maybe if you're paying attention, they mentioned something called the coronavirus, but not here, not our problem. And even as things were working across from, from Washington State over to even New York City, it seemed like a problem that was so far away that surely it won't approach us here. I don't know about you, but we've been glued, you know, the governor's on and hearing the updates daily and hearing the numbers go up. And now the mandatory, to, you know, stay home and don't go out. Things haven't worked out quite like I thought they were going to. And as Christians, we're not exempt from these issues. We're caught up in the middle of them. But praise God, we know the Jesus that isn't in the tomb. Well, Mary comes in there. She looks inside, and she doesn't see him. So she goes back and tells the disciples. And Peter gets up and runs out, and John runs along with her. And they go running up the hill, and, and John, being much younger than Peter, runs up ahead. John gets there first and looks in, and he sees the cloths that were used to wrap the body. But no Jesus. Then Peter rises up just a little bit later, I think probably a little out of breath, huffing and puffing, trying to keep up with the young guy. I know how that feels. And he goes in there and stoops in and looks. What's he see? The cloths. I find it interesting because they were going there to see Jesus. And all they find are the cloths. And both times it's mentioned here, twice in this passage, that both of them saw the cloths. Their reason why they were left behind for us to discover. So this morning I just want to take a peek at sort of the lessons of the of the of the cloths. What can we draw from this? And there's three things I want to look at uh, this morning as we talk about the linen the cloths that were left behind. Left behind for us to find. The first thing is, you know what? They're left behind that there are evidence that the Lord has risen. Right? If, if someone had kidnapped, and, 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 I don't know, do you kidnap a dead body? I don't know if it's the right term or not. Right? If, if someone had stolen the body and relocated it, you wouldn't take the time to unwrap and carefully do it and fold the napkin that was over the face. No one would have taken the time to do that. Yet somehow, miraculously, the body of Christ had passed through those cloths. You know, they weren't left behind because Jesus was forgetful. It wasn't because he forgot to pack them. They were left behind because he wanted us to find them. In the middle of all of this, folks, the, the, the stinky cloths that are used to wrap the dead body, right? All that gunk, all that thing that's left behind are left here in this world. If you notice, this world's not perfect. Actually getting less so every day. And even as Christians, I think we struggle sometimes with the same fears and doubts that the world has. But praise God that we have the opportunity to turn from that and look at Christ. We have a hope this world doesn't have. I, I can't imagine going through all this stuff that the world's going through without Jesus Christ. Praise God we have him. But we have these remnants of these linen cloths, if you will. We have remnants of this old world that still sticks around with us. But they're there to show that Christ is risen. And what I mean by that, that this is an opportunity as us, as Christians, and so much so in my life, I know that Jesus is real. He's been answering my prayers through all this. He's been leading. He's been guiding. He's been comforting. All these things that I think my walk with the Lord has been closer during the hard times than it ever is in the good times. Do you ever feel that way? 
Yeah. Right? I mean, when things are going well, when things are going good, I sort of relax my relationship with God oftentimes. But boys, when it gets tough, I'm on my knees. Right? When things are going, I don't know how it's going to work out. It forces me to turn to the creator of the universe and say, God, you got this. I don't know. Right? He, God hasn't told me. He hasn't sent me a text. I've looked on Facebook. There's a few that claim to be God, but I don't think they're really him. God doesn't owe me any explanation. I'm just called to trust and obey. But these things, this junk in this world, are left here that shows that he is real, that he is alive. Let me ask you something. Over the past month, how many of you guys have had uh, an answer to prayer? Honky. Amen. Beep, beep. <laughs> right? Amen. Right? How many of you guys have felt the presence of God in your life? The lesson of the law of the cloth, that stinky remnants that's behind, even this coronavirus, is used for the glory of God, that Jesus is alive and well. He's not dead in a tomb somewhere. Be careful, I'll get preaching. <laughs> But these things are left behind so that we would know. Folks, the resurrection changes everything in our lives. I think we've had more opportunities to share the gospel. You guys know, I mean, I have not been a Facebook guy. I've been sort of anti, I've resisted and all this. And the Lord brought me to a humble place because that's where some of the people are, so I'm on there too now. Ugh. But it's amazing we put our, 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 our sermons, our testimonies, and our heart out there, and people are responding. You know, just, what, two weeks ago we put Jim Shaver's testimony on there. It's unreal the amount of people who have clicked because it strikes a chord. People are looking and searching. And praise God, we have the answer because we serve the risen Christ. The second thing we talk about the evidence, right? The the loin cl the, the, loin cl the the cloths were left as an evidence of his resurrection. He's not here, he is risen. But also it leaves has a lasting effect on us. Because I imagine if the disciples came through and they looked down through, they scratched their head and say, wait, how can this be? We saw Jesus die on the cross. We saw him be taken down. They placed him in the tomb. They wrapped his body. And yet he's not here. And this is really such a transformation in the disciples' lives. That we turn into the book of Acts and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And they are empowered. And the, and the disciples become bold when they were once afraid. Because once you get that point, what, what's the worst this world can do is kill us. Jesus is like, yeah, been there, done that. There's something more beyond that. I don't need to fear the grave. Now, praise God, there's something on the other side of it. And it has an effect. The disciples became bold. And folks, we can have a boldness like no other. book of Matthew has one of my favorite verses about the resurrection. It's the angels turn around and talk to the disciples. It says, He is not here, for he has risen just as he said. Right? You guys can say that. He's not here, for he has risen, what? Just as he said. Let me tell you something. If Jesus can keep that promise, is there any other promise that he can do? No. That folks, Jesus says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Do you believe that? I mean, that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Do you believe that? 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you believe that? Don't you see the resurrection proves on this side of glory that Jesus never fails. Now, I don't always understand it. It's interesting. John tells us that at this point, the disciples did not understand the scriptures that Jesus would rise from the dead. Jesus had told them several times, and yet they didn't get it. They were kind of thick. And I would love to be all judgy on them, but you know what? I can't because I'm kind of thick too. I'm glad you're not. Jesus says, I got this. I can handle this. I'm telling you what's going to happen. Take my hand. Stay close to me. The ride might be rough. It may be difficult, but I've been this way before, and it's victorious on the other side. Praise God. And I'm thick, and I don't always do it. I don't always trust, and I doubt, and I fear. And like Peter walking on the water, I'll look at the waves, and I'll go down. But praise Jesus, he reaches out and grabs us time and time again. Jesus never fails. Never. The resurrection should have an effect on us. We should be bold. In this world, you will have tribulation. But do not fear, I have overcome the world. There's a passage out of Peter. Remember, Peter was the one who, who got there second. John beat him there. But in the book of 1 Peter, we have this passage. 1 Peter chapter 1. It says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Right? In this we always rejoice. Through the coronavirus, I can rejoice in the Lord, even though I'm in a little bit of a trial. It feels big, but in God's hands, it's small. I might be suffering. I might be hurting. Maybe some of you, you know, the economy, the jobs, and, and what's going to happen. I don't have the, all the answers, but I'll tell you, Jesus does, and he will never let you down. Stick close to him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. But in this we greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. And I love that verse. Peter says, you know what, I've, I've been there. I walked with Jesus. I talked with him. I ate with him. I saw him. I betrayed him. I was there. He restored me. I have all these things. And Peter says, that's the reason why I walk with him today. I'm bold because I know he's real. But you guys didn't see that. And yet you still praise him. We are testimonies that we walk by faith and not by sight. That we can turn our eyes upon Jesus, as the old hymn says. Look full at his wonderful face, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim. It has an effect on us. That of those trials we go through, the book of Revelation, we've been going through Revelation. I feel bad for the Wilkinses because... I promise that when we get back, we'll be out of Genesis. That's not going to happen. But we were going through Revelation, and the book of Revelation to the seven churches, each one says to him who overcomes. Folks, this is a trial and a tribulation. It is real. But through the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, we can overcome and be victorious on the other side. Amen? I kind of like this. I, just, I can get used to this. But in this, this tries our faith. 
You know, it's easy to say, Jesus, I believe in you when things are easy. It's easy to say, Jesus, I trust in you when things are going well. But think about this. The Bible says we offer up a sacrifice of praise. Now, a sacrifice is something that's hard. There's something you give up. Something that's dear to you that you give up for something else. Folks, a sacrifice of praise is when things are hard, when things are tough, I still bow on my knees and praise and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In my hurt and in my pain, in my fear and in my doubt, I turn around and worship Him. A sacrifice of praise. And you can do that in your home, you can do that in your car. You can do it behind a mask. Because he's worthy of so much praise. So we talk about the cloths are for an evidence that he's not there. That they have an effect on us. And lastly, I want to tell you something. The best part is that we know how it ends. It's a reminder of the end of the story. Death did not win. That in here, the body didn't rot away. But Jesus rose from the dead victorious. And the Bible says, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. We're told that where he is, that we will be also. I don't know about you, but that means there's been many times I said, Lord, come quickly. You know, wouldn't break my heart, Lord, if the rapture happened right now. <laughs> I, mean, I was out last night trying to work on the generator, and I'm pulling, I'm yanking, and I'm like, Lord, come on. I, I told my wife, I said, you know, I was this, this close to tears. I was just like, just one more thing goes wrong, Lord, one more thing. It's been a bad week. Anyone else have a bad week? All right. All right, so you're not judging me then. You're right there with me. But at the end of it, yeah, I pour out my heart and say, Lord, this is what I'm going through. I even said, Lord, make it stop. I almost did like a Wizard of Oz thing, right? You ever, have you ever had that Wizard of Oz prayer? And you're like, what are you talking about, Pastor? You've gone nuts. I might be sanitizer poisoning. I don't know. It affects the brain. <laughs> right? But that, but that Dorothy prayer, that Wizard of Oz prayer says, Lord, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Have you ever prayed that? Lord, take me home. Come quickly, Lord. And he says no because we still have a job to do. But we can look for the hope. The hope of the resurrection is tied directly with the hope of the, of the rapture of the church. That Jesus says, I came. I saw, I conquered, I will come again. He has not forgotten you. The cloths were left there as a reminder of what's in store for us. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. At the trump, at the sound, the dead in Christ will rise up. And we who are alive and remain will meet up and catch up with the Lord in the air. Woo! Wouldn't that be great? Some poor soul can find my car. They can have it. <laughs> we can have the generator, too. I don't know what the problem with that is. But all these things, we are more than conquerors. This is not the end of the story. God has not brought us this far to leave us. He is victorious, and he will come again. That my faith strengthens me day by day. But boys, it makes me homesick. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Even so, come quickly. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, for the evidence of the resurrection. Lord, the effects of that resurrection in us. And also the ending and what that means for us. Lord, I pray your people as we bow our, on our knees and cry out with our voice that you will meet us where we are. You will meet our needs. You will sustain us and strengthen us. That we will share our faith. We will let our light so shine before men that may see our good works and glorify our in heaven. 
We do all these things, Lord, because we love you. Lord, you are alive. We sing that song. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Lord, help me to shine. Help me, though tried by fire, to stand. Not in my strength, Lord, but by the power of your hands upon me, Lord. We ask these things in your name. And all God's people honked. <laughs> If you got your song sheet with you, we're going to sing Victory in Jesus. I know someone says this isn't an Easter song. I say, I can't think of a better song for Easter. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. praise you almighty god the living lord who lives within our heart lord who walks us and talks with us along the way lord i pray you touch your people be ever so close lord it's so good to, to see everyone even though it's through glass and through metal lord to be together in your body your church glorifying your name Lord, what a, what a foretaste of heaven this is going to be. Lord, walk, help us out of here. Be victorious. Encourage our spirits. Lift up our voice. Lord, you're not done with us yet. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Amen.